Jared's all stars. So like three or four days ago now, the NBA released the first ballot of all-star voting and it was like roughly as expected, you know, you had your, of course, crazy ones down at eight and nine with like Austin Reeves, uh, who else? Kevon Looney, Derrick Rose is like a staple for all-star voting. He's never going to make it again, probably, but he is always going to be high on fan votes. But I want to give you my list or the correct list of all-stars this season. So let's get into it. The first guard, pretty easy. Luka Doncic, don't really need to explain it. He's averaging 34, nine and nine, playing like an MVP, playing at an all-time level. Shea Gilgis Alexander. Shea Gilgis Alexander should also be very obvious, you know? He's having a career year, averaging like 31 while shooting 50% from the field. He's turned to OKC from like what people thought was gonna be an, an embarrassing tank race to one of the most entertaining teams in the league. Shea is better than your favorite player. When LeBron retires, they need to make like the all-star captain or like the all-star voting system named after him because he's been like a shoe-in for the captain award ever since they created it. Maybe like the LeBron James all-star captain. All right. Yeah, we could definitely do better, but I think that's the least we could do for him once he retires. This past December, he's averaged like 31, seven, seven and a half. So yeah, I, I get it. I understand why people want to see someone else, but LeBron's an all-star starter. I don't know if this is a controversial opinion, but yeah, Zion should be an all-star starter. I know that come all-star break, we may be talking about if he's played enough games, but as of right now, he's just like a no-brainer for me. He He's like the definition of an all-star to me. It, it, the, the event, the incident <laughs> with New Orleans and Phoenix like a month ago, where he dunked the basketball and people were getting mad, that was like a litmus test for me if you liked basketball, because if you were mad at him for doing exactly what he said, which was giving the fans who pay to watch those games a show, if you were mad at him for that, I just think you don't like watching basketball. But let's get like the stats out of the way. He's averaging 26 and seven while shooting 61% from the field. That's all, he's also averaging four and a half assists a game. He should 100% be one of the faces of one of the most fan-centric events of the season. Nikola Jokic also does not need an explanation. It's kind of crazy that we're talking about this guy like he could really win a third MVP in a row. It's crazy to me whenever I look at Steph's stats, just how comparable this season is to his unanimous MVP one. All respect to Shea, he's one of my favorite players in the NBA right now, but if Steph wasn't injured, he'd be an all-star starter. Anthony Davis also probably would have been a shoe-in starter if it wasn't for injuries. It's crazy that last year we were kind of talking about him like his prime was already over. And yeah, he's just now coming up on 30, but it, it did kind of feel like it was over. It felt like the Anthony Davis thing was done. He couldn't stay healthy. But I'm glad he stayed relatively healthy this season, and I'm glad that he's playing like an all-star and like all-NBA player again. Paul George, who had a pretty not awesome Clippers season, honestly, he's been pretty awesome. And it feels like as fans, we finally like evolved past the hating Paul George era. I, I personally was never a big player. Paul George hater. He's been one of my favorite players for a long time now. What can I say? I got a thing for volume scores myself. He's been a rock for this LA team. And despite what people thought when they were first like signed and traded for, George is definitely the leader of this team. John Morant. Remember what I just said for Zion? Exact same thing goes for John Morant. He's kind of having an underappreciated season. I know his stats last season were pretty comparable, but to me, that doesn't make it any less impressive. It says a lot to me about the Western Conference that John Morant being a starter hasn't even been a question. It's okay, NBA fans, you can admit Devin Booker is awesome. We all know it at this point. Motown Noah mentioned recently in one of his videos that he wants to see Booker buy fully into like the villain persona, and I 100% agree. Phoenix's reputation as a whole is gone, so might as well, man. Let's do it. But yeah, Devin Booker has been very awesome this season. I have sat and thought long and hard on this one, and it took me a long time to finally get here, but I think De'Aaron Fox should make the All-Star game this year. There's three things that sold him for me over Damian Lillard, which is who I picked him over. Uh, and the first being that he's just never been one, and I really think that he deserves it. Dame has been an All-Star multiple times before. Not to say that he shouldn't be an All-Star this year, but I'd rather see the new guy get it for once, you know? Second, this reason's kind of dumb, and the one I have least like belief in, but it is a reason. 
Fox has played like 10 more games. Third, and this kind of goes with the first one, Sacramento's just been more successful this season. Like as a whole, Sacramento's been a better and more fun story. So I think for just like NBA fans and and Sacramento fans, it'd be cool to see one of their players make it this year. And, and it would be cool to see De'Aaron Fox make it specifically. <sighs> Man, this one hurts, but yeah, Lowry Markkinen should definitely be an all-star this year. I don't know who thought that Utah would deserve an all-star this year or that it would be Lowry Markkinen, but that's where we are. And yeah, he deserves it. He has just been so much fun this season and he's really carried Utah to maybe potentially a play-in spot. It's my understanding that there is a war going on right now. Am I, am I right in this? All right, the Eastern starters, Eastern starters. Let's get it the first one out of the way. Mr. 71 himself, Donovan Mitchell. I think we all collectively knew Cleveland was gonna be good, but like outside of Ohio, who thought they were gonna be this good this fast? Also, who thought that Donovan Mitchell would be the best guard in the East? But yeah, that's where we are. And there's not much else to it. He should 100% be a starter. Okay, so if no one else is going to say it, I'll say it. Jalen Brown should 100% be an all-star starter this year. He's been like the most underrated all-star level player, you know, like, uh, of course, he's not like not being acknowledged because he's an all-star level player, but like nobody's really talking about the fact that he's averaging like 27 and 7. I don't know when we start having the Jalen Brown superstar conversation, but I think that we're starting to knock at that door. All right, I'm going to do these next three all at once because there's four players that really have like that really have a case for it and should be in it, but I can only pick three, unfortunately. So yeah, first, Kevin Durant. If you watched my last video, this is pretty obvious. Love me some KD. He's my pick for MVP this year. He should be a starter. Second, Giannis. This, through a pretty low-key, turbulent Milwaukee season, he's been their rock, and he's kept them like firmly top three in the East. So yeah, his stats have been amazing too. He should be a starter. This was where the real debate was for me. And I want you to know that both of these players are in like my top five, if not top 10 favorite players in the NBA right now. I love them both a lot. So if I pick the one I don't pick, I don't like any less or don't think he's like not a good player. Just, there can only be three. Joel Embiid should be an all-star starter. I feel like he hasn't been getting the respect he deserves this season. And I feel like you should be higher in like all-star voting and MVP voting. Plus, Boston already has one of the Jays starting, so they can live with one of them coming off the bench. All right, reserves. First one, easy. Jason Tatum. I'm not even going to get into it. He should be an all-star. Kyrie Irving. Also feel like this one's pretty obvious. I don't know how I went my entire Nets video without mentioning him like at all. But since retracting his comments, he's been pretty amazing and a big part of why Brooklyn's been this good. If you had him as a starter, I wouldn't really blame you or disagree with you. Jimmy G Buckets! Got a soft spot for him in my heart to this day. Jimmy kind of feels like Jalen where he's having a pretty awesome season and it just feels like it's going under the radar. Nobody's really talking about the fact that Jimmy's averaging like 21-5 and 4 again. Granted, that might be because Miami has been like in and out of the play-in race, but he's been like the main reason they've even been there. DeMar DeRozan DELIVERS! Okay, this one might also be a little biased, but you tell me with a straight face that the guy averaging 26, five and five shouldn't be an all-star. Chicago's been having a bit of a good run recently and it'd be cool to see him in there again. I think a lot of years we'd look at Pascal Siakam and what he's putting up and be like, that guy's oh, like a lock to be a starter, right? And, and he's not even like in the question because of just how good the NBA has been this season. 26 and a half, eight and a half, and six and a half. Like as unawesome as Toronto has been this season, Pascal has been 10 times more awesome. Bam Adebayo is like quietly kind of having a career year offensively. And if you look at the stats, you'd probably just be like, well, he's only averaging like two more points a game. But I think Miami fans and like people who've watched the Heat would agree with me. He's just like more aggressive and more impactful on the offensive end in ways that like Heat fans have been hoping for for a long time now. Plus, he's been awesome on the defensive end as well still. So big bam man myself, put him in. You thought I was crazy when I picked Lowry Markin in out west? I'm going for it. Tyrese Halliburton should be an all-star. We're halfway through the season and people are finally having to accept like, okay, yeah, Indiana, they might be here to stay. They might be a playoff team. They've been like not only in the play-in race, they've been in like the playoff race. They've had a, like a firm six seed. And Halliburton is the biggest reason why. And yeah, he should be an all-star. All right, so honorable mentions. First, the West, Damian Lillard. Sorry, man, if the rosters were bigger, I'd give you the spot, but I want to see Fox this year. 
Aaron Gordon, barring a lot of injuries, he probably won't get the nod, but I would love to see him in the All-Star game this year. He's been a big reason Denver's been as good as they have. In that same sort of vein, Jaron Jackson Jr. probably won't get the nod unless there's injuries, but he's been big for Memphis and I would love to see him get it. And it's been fun to see him like kind of finally figure it out this year, like in a, like a maturity sense, you know, like he's always been good, but he's finally seeming like he's like playing more calm and collected, which is a very cliche thing to say, but it is what he's doing. Trey Young, He's probably more deserving than Hal Burton. He will probably get it over Hal Burton, but I'd rather see Hal Burton in there. James Harden, kind of hard to ignore 22, 6, and 11. Darius Garland, the East is way too stacked or he should definitely be one. Paolo Bancaro is awesome and oh, I'm sad that he will not be an all-star this year. Jalen Brunson and Julius Randle, the New York boys have been cooking and their record shows it. Specifically, Randall's been stepping up a lot recently, and if he keeps playing like he has been, he could probably get the nod, honestly. Finally, Zach Levine. He's been having a low-key resurgence. I, this is definitely my most biased. Zach Levine is my favorite player, but it, he it's hard to ignore that he's averaging 23 points per game, and that's with the rough start. With how Chicago's been playing, with how he's been playing, he could make a case close to the game, but I don't think he's gone this year.